hi everyone, uh, I'm back, I guess. Wanted to add more than one video to my channel. Because my last video was turning a third party Transformer figure into Herbie the Love Bug, which I'm still amazed at how well that turned out. But this time around, I wanted to talk about uh, one of my collections and some new additions to it. And that collection being King Kong. Now, I'm a pretty big King Kong fan. Uh, one time in a debate, a Godzilla fanboy called me King Kong's biggest fan, which I think he meant as an insult, but I'm not going to take it that way. But, uh, I mean, pretty weird, though, to be called that, because honestly, I haven't even seen every King Kong movie, let alone like every King Kong movie. I would even say there's more bad King Kong movies than good King Kong movies. But the best King Kong movie... The original 1933 King Kong also happens to be one of the greatest movies ever made. I could do an entire video about why that is. It's, it's amazing, this beautiful efficiency, its pacing, its script, its dialogue, its acting, its effects all for the time period. And the fact that it's not just one of the greatest adventure movies ever made from Hollywood's golden era but also a pay on to Hollywood's golden era itself. You know, it's not just about this guy who, uh, you know, they go to kidnap some giant ape off some island, but it's a guy who wants to make a movie about kidnapping a giant ape off of an island. Now, don't get a lot of King Kong stuff. And my collecting King Kong is actually a pretty new thing. And uh, it was started off by the MonsterVerse. Uh, I mean, I have my opinions on the MonsterVerse, and I'm not exactly a big fan of Godzilla vs. Kong, but what it did do is bring Kong merchandise to store shelves, especially up here in Canada, where we don't get a whole heck of a lot of stuff. So, of course, I picked up Playmates uh, Kong figure. I was hoping they would make a 1933 version to go with this, but that has never materialized. Uh, picked up, of course, the Godzilla vs. Kong. Kong as well, with this little battle damage, and this little plushy guy here. Good start to a Kong collection. And, uh, I mean, it's okay, but what really, what really uh, this new awareness of Kong has done is that, you know, it's brought attention back to Kong as an IP altogether. So it's not just MonsterVerse stuff that we get, but also other things. Like this guy, this is actually my favorite piece in my collection so far, uh, even took this guy to uh, Cardston, Alberta, to the birthplace of Faye Ray, which I only live a few hours drive from. So he's a, he's a cute little guy, I'm glad I was able to add him to my collection. And these are all just like a, a an outgrowth of my marginally larger kaiju collection. I've got little things like, uh, like Chibi Mothra and this uh, this thing. I'm not even sure how I came across this. Uh, I was trying to figure out, what is this dinosaur figure for? Like, I, It's like a cross between Archaeopteryx and a Pteranodon. And then I happened to see some clip art, or not some clip art, but some concept art for Rodan. Like, this is a toy based off of the original concept art for Rodan, which is like super weird. And and little little Pigmon here because he's so ridiculous and ugly. I had to get a little figure of him. You also have Playmate Shin Gojira, uh, which goes down in infamy. But I love this figure because that face. I can't get over that face. It makes me laugh every single time I look at it. It's like he's that you know eel trying to tell you a joke like uh huh uh huh. But my collecting kaiju, of course, began with this the imperial 1986 godzilla figure the, this is the same one i had when i was a kid i picked this guy up and i would love to get my hands on the imperial king kong figure to complement this guy that's sort of one of my holy grails is that imperial king kong figure but what i want to talk about today are some new additions some very surprising things that i was able to find which are, of course, the NECA King Kong figures. Uh, total surprise, because we don't get stuff like this up here in Canada. In fact, when I saw the initial initial buzz online about these, it was like, oh, they're like, you know, I, I went down to Target and got them. And it's like, well, all right, we don't have Targets in Canada, so I guess I'm, I'm out of luck. But uh, no, no, uh, props to a local comic shop, another Dimension Comics in Calgary, uh, for have actually having these 
and I was able to pick up both of them. So let's have a look at these guys, shall we? All right, so first up and out of the box here is the, the Ultimate Jungle Kong, or whatever it is they call him. And uh, this figure, uh, it's NECA, right? And I, I understand there's issues with NECA. I'm not really super tapped into the whole uh, toy collector community. I watch a few channels online, but I don't have the income <laughs> to be collecting lots of things. I know there's issues with NECA that people have. Um, hear a lot about these things coming out, broken out of the box and things like that. Um, my figures were fine. Um, as, you know, um, pre-built, posable models, uh, more so than say, action figures or like that. But anyways, comes with a couple extra heads, a couple extra types of hands as well, so you can get them posed however you want. And comes with some accessories to illustrate, imitate different points in the Skull Island part of Kong's story. So you see here, uh, you've got the branch which he shoved down the throat of the Allosaurus. Ooh, I like this pose. It's kind of like a come at me, bro pose. Uh, no Allosaurus, though, which is a bit of a shame. Um, not that I would expect you know, that to be boxed in. Um, I mean, maybe NECA could do, you know, an Allosaurus with a tree with Fey Ray in it. So that's one thing that's missing from both these figures is that there is no Fey Ray. There's a bit of an oversight. Uh, but it would be nice to have a original, you know, Willis O'Brien, original Kong style uh, allosaurus figure to go with this in the meantime i mean he works pretty well with this silly retro <laughs> dinosaur that i have you know just get that get that in there eat that there you go um another point in the story is this little thing uh which is from the lost spider's pit sequence you still see this character crawling up a, a vine to get at jack driscoll uh, while Kong is at the top trying to grab for Jack. A little bit of extra uh, tension in that scene. Uh, but the, the spider pit sequence is actually a really good example for what is so good about the original King Kong and what is missing in later uh, uh, remakes of it. Now, depending on who you talk to, Miriam C. Cooper, Willis O'Brien, whoever, the people who made the film, the spider pit sequence was either written, models were made, but it wasn't actually filmed, or uh, that it was filmed, was in the movie, and then after test audiences looked at it, they uh, they took it out. And it was actually good they took it out. I mean, it's, you know, legendary scene, but we don't need to know what happens to the sailors, right? They're on the log, Kong upends the log, they fall into a chasm, they die. Fine. Because the story's not about them. The story is about Kong and and Jack. Right, and Jack trying to rescue Anne from Kong. So you don't need to know what happened to the sailor. They died. Got it. You don't need a five minute or ten minute sequence in the middle there to show what happened to them. Right, that's just gratuitous special effects. Um, but it is a nice little nod that they did throw this little uh, this little monster uh, from Willis O'Brien's imagination into uh, this set here. And then, of course, we have the Pteranodon that this comes with, which is uh, from, you know, the top of Skull Mountain when uh, it tries to kidnap Anne. And Kong has to BTFO this Pteranodon right here, which actually fits quite nicely into that one hand. So you can kind of mix scenes a little bit here, taking a stick to the Pteranodon. The figure itself is great. I mean, I should say this Tranodon is also posable. Um, move its head, you can open and shut his jaws, whatever. So that's that's a nice little thing. Uh, so too is the spider pit monster. Its head moves around a bit, his jaws open a bit. The figure itself is fine. I mean, it's it's got a lot of joints, uh, which kind of disrupt the flow of you know, what's supposed to be just this, like, rippling body of fur, but, eh, yeah, it's, it's what it is. You, you gotta go with what you gotta go with, and I think otherwise the sculpting is great. I know that this is supposed to be sort of a 1933-inspired but original NECA design, but I think they got the 1933 head of Kong, like, perfect. You know, Kong's not just a gorilla. The original Kong, he's got a look, he's got a certain personality that Willis O'Brien... Uh, instilled into the stop-motion model, and I think this NECA figure captures it perfectly. 
you, know, you can pose them wherever you like. The jaw moves up and down. That's the classic Kong look there. And I love these eyes as well because they're not just painted on eyes. They're like weird little glass eyes. Add a certain level of realism and even personality to the figure, which I really appreciate. So that's that's the first of these two figures that NECA put out. I'll talk about the third one in a, in, once I'm done. But yeah, there we go. So that's the, the ultimate jungle, whatever, adventure, Kong, Skull Island uh, part of Kong's story there. Now second, picked up the uh, Kong in New York set here, which again is the same figure. It's the exact same Kong figure with the exact same heads, exact same hands. These sorts of things. Just come with different accessories. I wanted to get both uh, for the accessories. Don't know if the accessories themselves are worth the uh, the price I paid for them up here in Canada, but it is what it is. So um, you know, this is the the New York Attack uh, version of Kong. So you got this beautiful little biplane model in here. I use the word model rather than toy. This has got <laughs> this is set the consistency of most models that I've seen. And you've got the uh, the shackles. Those are the accessories. That's the, a bit of the disappointment with this is, um, again, I, Kong without the Fey Ray figure feels incomplete. And, uh, I mean, it's unfortunate that, you know, the, the jungle one comes with the Skull Island monster. It comes with the Pteranodon. It comes with the stick. So three accessories. You can say, okay, the two shackles and the plane are the three accessories. Uh, and the plane, I do grant, is a more complicated piece than, say, the Pteranodon or the Skull Island uh, spider pit monster. So I get it. I get it. It just would have been nice if they just include that extra little, little tiny little, little bit of a piece of plastic that could fit in Kong's hands. Uh, unfortunately, one thing that does not fit in his hands are, is the biplane. There's a photo on the back of the box here, which shows Kong grabbing the biplane, but you can't do that. You have to you have to do that whole bit of um, like heating up his hand, heating up the hand so you can actually open it up, uh, open up so it can fit around the the tail of the biplane here. So, but other, I mean, you can fit sort of just wiggle it in there so that the it's being supported on the hand. So you can do a pose where Kong is like grabbing the, grabbing the biplane. It's a little hard to see there without adjusting the camera. You know, you can kind of play at that a little bit. Um, works out nicely. Would have been cool if he had a base as well. If I was going to add, um, add two more sets to this, I was going to add two more sets. Um, it would be the Allosaurus with the tree and a Fey Wraith figure in you know jungle, torn up jungle dress. And, like, what you see on the box here, like, the top of the Empire State Building with Fey Ray in an evening gown. That would be, like, the two accessories I would want to add uh, for this if NECA was going to go ahead and do that. But otherwise, we have the different head on Kong here, uh, sort of snarling. I think it's a good look for here. And, yeah, I mean, otherwise, it's all right keeping the shackles on, on Kong here because I never did get the McFarlane Toys uh, Kong figure. Saw it once on sale a million years ago, didn't pick it up, so I didn't collect Kong at the time. Uh, really regretting that now, but story of life. So that's the second Kong. So yeah, these are these are nice additions. These are like the highlight of my Kong collection. Now you, I already show you the rest of my Kong collection. These are the clear highlights for that collection. They came at a not unreasonable price point for pre-built posable models of Kong. Um, you know, I just don't have the money to get you know, like a $200 or whatever figure that's 20 inches high or or whatever um, the uh, Mezco, the Mezco uh, figure is. Um, wish I could, it'd be great, but I don't. Um, what's left in collecting Kong then, what I can afford? Uh, the same comic shop I picked up these guys at also had the third version, the illustrated variant, which I did not pick up. Um, you know, it's based off of a... They sort of promote it like it's based off the poster, but it's actually um, based off of a Basil Gogo's uh, cover for Famous Monsters of Filmland. Um, you know, it's got same figure, but it's got a lurid paint scheme like Basil Gogo's paintings do. 
if it was actually based off of the poster, the movie poster, and it came with that Fay Ray figure I keep talking about, like he's carrying on the poster, then I would have picked it up. Um, but such as it is, you know, it's just a bare bones figure, just with a different paint job. Eh, not not gonna bother. I, I could barely justify the expense of buying these guys, considering that I'm still kind of fun employed right now, um, due to COVID. <laughs> so. Um, hard to even justify buying these guys but I, I honestly couldn't pass them up because it's just it's something here it's something here in canada i don't have to pay like you know, double the price for the shipping of it or anything like that um you know i look online every now and then see what else is out there um i'm a bit sad i missed out on the mondo uh kong tiki mugs but again i don't feel like paying double the price of the item and shipping and uh yeah i was a bit disappointed that geeky tiki's didn't put out a you know Godzilla versus Kong Tiki mugs or anything like that, but it is what it is. I look at you know the Empire State Building uh, gift shop very wisely has a lot of Kong stuff on there. Uh, unfortunately, I have no real interest in going to New York uh, anytime soon, at least, so um, I won't be able to see that for myself firsthand. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Just what Kong stuff I happen to luck out and and see around here. Like I said, I'm even though I have mixed feelings about the monster verse and about godzilla versus kong um i am grateful that it brought attention back to kong as an ip because it doesn't mean just monster verse kong merchandise it means all sorts of different kong merchandise so we'll we'll see what pops up in the meantime this stuff sits on my my shelf of dinosaur and fossil stuff here um i even put it where the you know because uh, in my everyday life i actually teach virtual school programs to kids uh, might put Kong back there just to give kids a bit of a you know, heads up about one of the greatest movies ever made of all time, and uh, and some of the stuff uh, that comes out of uh, comes out of it. So, anyways, yeah, thanks for this rambling video um, <laughs> and and tuning into it, and uh, my my very inexperienced YouTube toy reviewer review of the NECA Kong figures. Once again, as uh, as a relatively obscure IP from some old movie that is just got to be super awesome, um, these are great pre-built posable models. And if you're a Kong fan, you already know about this, you already collected them, and I don't know why you're watching this video. But anyways, thanks again, and who knows what I'll do my next video on. Until then, see ya!